the, the weight of what we have to carry as black women is too heavy to carry by ourselves. And we are not doing a good job at carrying it. What if every black child grew up with a father that protected and loved them mm. and a mother that nurtured them? Mm. And when they had gifts in them and things that they wanted to cultivate, their family actually had the resources to get behind that. Having both my parents in the household, I feel like was a cheat code. I feel like I had an advantage in life because of that. We have a lot of people that have different things and are talking about what men should do and what women should do, but they've never even seen the dynamic in real time. Like, What can this other race of men tell my black son about what it is to be a black man in America? Black love is the revolution. It really is. Like Nothing is going to take us further than us realizing that we honestly need each other mm -hmm. and that there's nothing wrong with admitting that. Now that would make a huge difference in black families, but are you willing to make the sacrifice? Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. So a black owned dental office had a sign posted that said, no house shoes, no pajamas, no bonnets, right? And social media was so up in arms that they tried to destroy this woman's business by leaving her bad reviews, saying that the sign was anti-black. I just want to know why everything negative and uncouth has to be labeled black culture. I also want to know why advocating for us to go in public looking like we care about ourselves and how we look is deemed as respectability politics. We should not be condoning and advocating for clear signs of depression because the only times I've ever been raggedy in public is when something was off with me mentally. Rolling out of bed in the morning and going in public with a bonnet and pajamas on and house shoes is unacceptable, uncouth behavior, no matter what race of people does it. And going out in public looking well put together like I care about myself doesn't mean that I'm trying to be like white people or I'm trying to get white people to respect me. Maybe it's because I respect me. Let's make having self-respect a part of black culture. Let's just break this down, Erica. I, I I mean, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. It's been it's been a long time coming, <laughs> but I want to start off with that clip because I mean, you just recently went viral off of that clip, right. and I felt every single thing that you said. But I also feel like some people were kind of tripping off of that. What what prompted you to make that video? Uh, what prompted me to make the video was just I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like here's a black woman who spent years going to school and everything so she could open up a dental office in her community yeah. and people that have never even stepped foot in her office are review bombing her, giving her one star reviews because of a sign she posted. Not because they experienced bad service, not because they didn't get what they paid for, but because they didn't like what a sign said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a sign that enforces a dress code, which is commonplace in most establishments, you know? So I just felt necessary to make a video about it because, you know, that's what I do. I talk about the things that sometimes bother me and things that I feel like need to be spoken about. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I do love about you. And I think this, this has been about a whole year in the making of trying to get you on the show because you're very big on the black community. Right. You're very big on black love. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I was like, yo, I gotta get you in. And when I saw that video, I mean, everybody and their mama shared that video. <laughs> and I was like, yo, what she's saying is true. It's like, how come we how come we within the black community can't have standards? Right. But then those same standards that our sister who um, um, went back into the community <laughs> uh, to bring affordable dental care to the community, she has standards. But then we don't review bomb uh, the club who says, hey, don't come in with flip flops, shorts and right. bonnets on. Uh, but that club is jam packed, probably five star reviews. Mm -hmm. But then a sister who's saying, hey, I want to come back to the community. But why are you getting your teeth done? Be respectful. Right. You know, um, I I'm curious when you are on your platform, what is your biggest, like what is the thing that you're really passionate about when it comes to the black community? What I'm very passionate about is like black love. Yeah. Cause I feel like that's the foundation of any chance that we have a survival. Okay. And us respecting ourselves. Respect is like, is such a key component that I feel like we've gotten far away from yeah. because we've labeled anything that resembles couth and decorum as like white supremacy or adhering to Eurocentric standards. Apparently if I want to look good and I care about the way I'm presented to the world, I'm trying to look better for white people. That's what I was told. What? That's what someone told me as a, as a response to the video that I'm whitewashed and you know, I'm trying to make black people adhere to respectability politics, which is a phrase that I can't say in, mind you. I feel <laughs> like when people say that, that's just an excuse 
for them to be raggedy. Like, I want to come out looking any kind of way, and I don't want nobody to say nothing to me about it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Let's go back to Erica, 10 years old, 5 years old. Where did your love for um, black love, um, where did your love and your passion for this message come from? It was just something that I saw and experienced. Okay. And I feel like I talk about my parents a lot because— you know, they're, they're the foundation of everything that I am. Okay, okay. And so seeing that, having that as my upbringing and knowing that I was afforded different resources and things that people don't have mm -hmm. because they might not have had a similar upbringing to mine, it just made me realize how blessed and fortunate I was, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt like this is something that we could all benefit from. Like, what if every black child grew up with a father that protected and loved them mm -hmm. and a mother that nurtured them mm -hmm. and when they had gifts in them? and things that they wanted to cultivate, their family actually had the resources to get behind that. Like, what if that was the possibility? So when I'm talking, I'm talking from that perspective because people think that like, oh, I'm smart or, you know, I mean, I put my words together well or whatever. All this came from my upbringing. Mm -hmm. Like, I like, I don't think I, I have to be an anomaly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There could be more people that have the resources to become better versions of themselves, but they just didn't have that growing up because our households are out of order. And so that's why your message, which I'm, I'm like, we're we gonna talk about this today. Right. I, I think it's so needed. You're saying, well, listen, man, listen, black love is needed because you wouldn't be where you are without black love. I would not. I would not. I have them both my parents and household, I feel like it was a cheat code. I feel like I had an advantage in life because of that, you know? And I was able to just see how things work realistically. We have a lot of people you know, that have different things and are talking about what men should do and what women should do, but they've never even seen the dynamic in real time. Like, I've grown up with that dynamic. That's what I was raised in. And I see what it is, and I see how it produces solid people, you yeah. know? Like, I have four brothers, and they're all solid. Ooh. Like, I love them all, and we're all close. We don't have rifts between siblings. Like, I don't talk to this brother. That wasn't allowed in my household. Right, right, right. You know, so it's like, I'm not saying that my household should be the standard yeah. and that everybody should do it like me, but I do know from just observation, like, the benefits that come when you have two people working together for something that's bigger than themselves. I often get questions about life insurance, where to buy, how to find affordable rates, the simplest application process, and most importantly, where to secure coverage instantly. Like, people don't want to wait a long time. They want the coverage right now. Giving the startling statistic that nearly 40% of African-Americans do not have life insurance coverage Today, it's even more critical to address these questions. My recommendation to all these questions is simple. My friends over at Ethos Life Insurance. These are the people who hold my life insurance policy. You see, their mission is to simplify life insurance and make it accessible online to everyone. No paperwork, no medical exams, or check this out, no blood tests. You simply answer some health questions online and just like that, you can secure coverage to exact same day. But the cherry on the top family, Ethos offers an incredible deal that I wish I had when I signed up with them for my life insurance policy about two years ago. You see, when you secure a life insurance policy through them, they will throw in a will and estate plan for 100% free. <laughs> I, I'm tripping and I'm excited at the same time because I personally spent $2,500 on my estate plan at the beginning of this year. So getting it free with a life insurance policy that might cost you as low as $50, that's a no brainer. I mean, like none. Don't just take my word for it. You see, Tanner R., a customer, uh, secured a $500,000 30-year policy without a physical exam through Ethos. He says the price was great. The process was completely easy. You see, Ethos truly values our time. You see, Alex got approved for a $1 million uh, policy in just five minutes. She said, simple and straight to the point. Comments were surprisingly user-friendly and great communication. So 
Are you ready to protect your family's financial future? Don't let this statistic define you. I want you to get covered today and get a will and get the life insurance policy and get the, uh, um, the, the what's it called? The uh, estate plan for 100% free. All you got to do is go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. Secure your coverage today and ensure peace of mind for your loved ones. All right, let's get back to today's show. You know, when we was um, out there, um, in the lobby area you're in town doing music which i didn't know you did music this is so dope this is actually listen. a quote from my song black black love is revolution oh it's a quote from my song bless me listen listen and then and then your, your your producer who's real dope is in town with you and um we were talking about like this whole uh, the rhetoric of 50 50, 100 100. And you said something that's actually real good. And I, I, I want to talk about that because it, mm-hmm. it goes back to Black Love. You're like, hey, it, it's really up to you. Whatever works in your family, works in your family. Right. He was like, but my parents, my grandparents, they did the quote unquote 50 50. They worked together to yeah. build something much bigger, right. legacy land and stuff like that. Exactly. Break down what you saw growing up in that dynamic because i think it's a great perspective for people to hear when it comes to a husband and a wife teaming up together to build something better and I, he said something that's so good he was like man i saw that my parents and sometimes my grandparents wasn't really feeling each other right but they was like nah this is bigger than me and you exactly break what from your perspective what did you see that inspired you today what i saw was just the results, like we have a tight knit family, things were able to get done and accomplished. Like when my dad would have a vision, Mm -hmm. he wanted to purchase this property, Mm -hmm. my mom would get on board, they would work together and they both had their roles and they understood what they were Mm. and they adhered to them Mm. regardless if somebody was mad or whatever because their commitment to each other and what they were building was bigger than their fleeting emotions, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I could feel some type of way today and then tomorrow I'm, I might be in a better mood, but stuff still has to get done mm-hmm. regardless of how I feel, mm-hmm. you know? So I saw that in real time. I saw times where my mom was up cooking breakfast and she mumbling under her breath. They might have, they clearly have gotten, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she don't like him right now. Yeah. He don't like her, but she's still doing what she needs to do. We still gonna eat and sit down as a family and he's still gonna go to work and she's still gonna go to work. And then they, they like, we're gonna make it work every day, you know? And so that's what I saw. And from that, I realized that like conflicts, cause I feel like nowadays, like people, things don't work out because people are so afraid of conflict. Yeah. But what my dad taught me is that on the other side of conflict is love. Ooh. So yeah, there's, there's issues that arise, but if you can like combat that, combat those issues and come to an understanding, the love that's on the other side of that is stronger than before it was a conflict. So it's not something that we should run away from. Mm. And that's what I saw growing up. Yeah. You know, I saw them work through things and get stronger and stronger. And I saw the result of it. Now they have property. They have acres of land, you know, that they've... It's the acres of land for me, though. Yeah. No, that that's what it is. And, like, that's not something they had before. It's not like someone passed that down to them. But because they thug it out and they stuck together and were committed to each other, now generational wealth is a thing that exists in my family. Wow. You know? And it's not just wealth, per se, from a money perspective. Right. Look at the wealth that's inside of you, the wisdom, the knowledge, the intellect, and and, and your passion for the black community. Right. Um, and I don't know your siblings, but it's like I'm pretty sure they may not be as vocal as you on your platform, but I'm pretty sure internally they have. Right. You know, like, hey, listen. Uh, They're on the same type of time. See, that's what I'm saying. You know? Do you feel as if this our generation um, has... I said this because I don't want to offend nobody because I know y'all get offended. <laughs> right. Especially black. Nah, I'm going to be quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it. Black people. Um, I don't feel that energy in the black community. Yeah. I don't feel like, hey, let's let's all come together. Let's, let's, let's love each other. Let's support each other. Let's rock with each other. I'm not saying that there's not any. Mm-hmm. There's, I know a lot of people in it, right. but when I look at the culture, I don't, I don't feel that way. And you know, what, to be honest with you, if I be honest with my own show, because I, I hate capping. I don't know. I've always, I can't sit here and say that I've always been like that. Right. You know, I think in my twenties, I, 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 it was all about me. Right. I was selfish. Then as I got older, I evolved and I got around other successful older wives or black men. I was like, yo, bro, me helping you actually helps me. Right. Me helping you. 
help you help someone else, that helps the community. And the community is where my children are going to be living. Right. So for me to be selfish and to keep everything for me and myself blocks my children from being successful because then now they're going to be selfish. They're going to be selfish. Now the community is selfish. Yes. And I, it was so funny. I think it was last year. It was uh, mid part of last year. And um, <laughs> putting myself out, you said something earlier uh, about which is so good about the black love and we got to respect ourselves. I was talking to a young lady, I just met her, and we were talking for a while. And she mentioned her boyfriend mm -hmm. about a month later after we started talking. Mm. And I, <laughs> and she was a good looking woman. I don't know if you, you've seen my show before, right? But I, I, I have the brains, the Bible, and a booty. Like that's what I like, right? Okay. <laughs> and a black woman. It's like it's like the B B B B B. She got to be black. She got to love the Lord Bible. She got to have the brains, intellect, and she got to have a little body, a little booty on. That's my thing. And she had all four. I was like, yes, Lord. <laughs> but then when she mentioned she had a man, I was like, wait, what? Right. And the twenty year old mindset, I'm like, I don't care, y'all ain't married. Yeah. But then the mature mindset, still flawed, but the mature and evolved mindset was, nah, man, I'm not gonna do that to my black brother. Right. I I'm not gonna mess up another black man's heart. I'm not gonna sit here and, and create issues with another black man. She's like, but we're just, we're just, I mean, yeah, we're in a relationship, but it's da da da. I'm like, I'm like, nah, sis. I, I literally called her sis on the phone when I was trying to holler. Yeah. Like, it literally flipped quick because I think when we can respect ourselves and respect other people, right? Um, then yeah, I'm, I'm a rock with it. Now, if she just would have been dating a guy, I, I would have dated. But when she said, I'm in a relationship with this man, right. I can't mess up another black man's home. Black love. How do we, because you're very big on this, how do we have bound, not boundaries, but standards for ourselves? Having standards for yourselves, for yourself, just comes from principles. Mm. So like, if a person has never sat down and thought about their core principles and they need to. Yeah. You know, because your principles helps you to be um, more disciplined and it makes you a disciple to your own word, yeah. to your own word and the things that you say for yourself. So for me, like my one of my main core principles is keeping my word. OK. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. OK. And so because of that, like it. It permeates everything that I do, like how I move throughout life. You okay. know? So I feel like it starts with having that, like establishing some some principles for yourself and then adhering to those principles. And that's how like the respect starts. But keeping the word is like one of the main things. If you can keep your word to yourself and other people, then you're already miles ahead and you're not going to be doing crazy, disrespectful things, you know. Do you think not. It's a bold question. You ain't got to ask answer it if you don't want to. Do you think dating outside or marrying outside of black hurts the black community? I don't know if I'll say <clears throat> that it hurts the community as a whole, but I don't think it benefits it at all. Ooh. You know, I don't know if I don't know if I'll say it hurts, but I don't think it presents a benefit because then the the children of that union, that you know, like it's easier for the wealth to leave the community. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know the the person, the spouse that the children are going to choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and just within that one generation or two generations, that wealth could be gone out of the community. You know, and then the understanding might not be as present. You know, like, and this is not a jab at like mixed people yeah, yeah. or anything like that. Talk, but talk, talk, talk. I just know, like, for me personally, the reason why a black man is important is because I want to have children. You know, mm. and it's like, what can this other race of man tell my black son? about what it is to be a black man in America. Like, he doesn't have that perspective. So like you're already going to have a parent that you grow up with who's not even going to be able to relate to you on the most basic level. Mm. Your identity in this world. And it's just like. But hold on, I'm going to play devil's advocate. OK. That white man can say, but I can teach him how to be a man. Yeah, but he can't teach him how to be a black man. He don't know that experience. It's a different experience. He doesn't, white men don't know what it feels like to walk into a room and have everybody looking at them in the mindset you don't know what people are thinking and what that does to your, your mental state. You feel me? And how you feel going in places knowing that people f either fear you or think you're a criminal or whatever. They don't have that, that complex of thinking that, even though they're the people that are the, mo the most responsible for, you know, 
doing, what is it, genocide and slavery and colonization all over the world. If anybody should be afraid of people, would you be afraid of them? But they don't get that reputation of people being scared of them. You know what I'm saying? So he just, I don't think he would be well enough equipped. He might teach him how to be a man, but it's a difference between being a man and a black man. Those are, those are two different things, in my opinion, you know? I think it was like six years ago. I can't remember. It was like five or six years. I do know it was pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, <clears throat> uh, I had some people interviewing uh, on my show. Mm -hmm. um, and they asked me a question. They said, would you ever date outside your race? And uh, I was connected to a very well-known um, white individual, predominantly white organization. And I said, respectfully, I love white people. Mm-hmm but there's no way in the world I could marry a white woman. Right. And it wasn't because I don't think, I think all white people are racist or, or, or white people are evil or bad or nothing. It has nothing to do with that at all because mm -hmm. I, I got two white people on my team and love them. They bring value. I, I enjoy our time together. Right. But it's, it goes back to what you said. When I come home. Right. And I want to have a conversation that really only, for the most part, the black community will really understand. I don't want to get, I, the last thing I want to do is sleep on the couch because we upset about a black and white argument. Right. And I was raised, you was raised by your mother and father in the home. My biological parents had me outside of wedlock. Mm -hmm. But my biological parents married two amazing spouses. You know, so my mom married my amazing um, other father, and then my dad married my amazing other mother. And I saw an example, two examples, right. of what marriage looks like, of what love looks like, of what the black community looks like. Mm -hmm. And my both of my mothers are two of the wisest individuals I've ever met in my life when it comes to the woman's side of things. Mm -hmm. um, hardest working most intellectual, loving, supportive. And I'm like, yo, I want to raise my kids with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I want I want my kids to be to see that love. Mm -hmm. And I want to do it with me and my wife in the same house raising our kids. Right. And by the grace of God, I don't have kids. Um and, and I'm praying that we will be able to do that. Because I do believe when the husband and wife is in sync and on the same page, I do believe we can make a greater impact in the community. Mm -hmm. And our kids will be kids will be better. But I could not. I agree with you. And I'm going to get it in the chat. I understand. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. I, I really don't believe love sees a color. Yeah. I really don't. I, I genuinely don't. I think that a black man or a black woman can date a white man or woman, and I'm not even upset with that love. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I do agree with you. It it doesn't really benefit the black community long term. Right. But it doesn't hurt it neither. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean— I'm thinking about it. It could hurt. It could potentially, you know. If we're could. all marrying outside? Yeah, if everyone is, then for sure, you know. If, if, yeah, it'll for sure hurt. But I mean, I feel like people don't put a, people don't understand how wonderful it is to really be understood by somebody. You no, know? no, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's not like a, you know, like I think something is wrong with other races of people, but I just, I really, really enjoy being understood. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have to explain certain things and you could just know from like how I look. Yeah. What I'm thinking. Absolutely. You know? And, um, I'm not saying that you can't get that with other people, but this is such a, I won't even say like a part of my identity because it's just who I am. Yeah. I can't say that this is a part, this is who I am. Yeah. And I need someone who like fully understands that. And then I want to produce, like if I love myself so much, because I do, I like how I look, mm -hmm. I like everything about me. I would want to produce children that look like me. Mm -hmm. I want them, their skin to be brown, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like a nice, deep brown skin, you know, have nice dark eyes, curly hair. Like I want the same thing that's in me. I want to make, you know, children that look like me because I like how I look, you know? So. Who's in that look like her? I like the way I look too, though. Yeah. <laughs> or me and the man. You hey, there you go, there you go. She's like me, hold on, wait a minute. Like, what about the husband? <laughs> 
you know I feel you. I feel you. I understand you. I understand you. Look like the both of us. I'm just saying. It was just like me. Like me. Like, what, what about your love like one? Like both of us. <laughs> I'm sure when he come around, he going to be all the way together. And we gonna, I'm going to want some stuff. I had to put that in for us brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like, hold you know up. Saying. What about us? The what about us? Nah, but you know what I'm saying. I, I, no, I'm with you. I, I really am. Um, it was so funny. I went to the um, to my first hip hop concert ever. Mm -hmm. Took the team and the people on my network to see Drake. And I have to say, man, when I was sitting, at, we, we got a suite. And when I was looking in the suite, we, we could see everything and everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And when I look around, I'm not saying there was not one white person in the building. But, you know, predominantly, it was black people. And just the energy in that room, the love in that room, the atmosphere of all that black energy. I literally said it. I said, man, dude, I just love my community. We just have a different swag we have a different flair we just have a different thing when we're all in sync there's no one better than us right i personally feel i agree the problem is we're just not in sync yeah you know the problem is i just think we don't really know how and i i, I just i don't know i don't know how we can get better as a community as a as a culture to really get us there but i think i think you're right it starts it starts with black love do you believe our sisters today and our brothers respect themselves no so i'm, I'm gonna say it one more time because i'm i just want to make sure i heard you right <laughs> <laughs> do you believe brothers in the black community respect themselves and do you believe sisters ladies in the black community respect themselves uh, I will say for the most part, no, because I can't do just a sweeping generalization like that. But I feel like a lot of us don't. Why? Break it down for me. I'm curious. Let's have a dialogue there. I feel like a lot of us don't respect ourselves because if we did, we would do better by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, we wouldn't have a problem with, like, looking good. You know, the way that I consider my, and it's not just about appearances, but right. that's the first thing that we see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's one of those things that could be implemented quite quickly to make a positive change, you know? Mm -hmm. But the way I see it is this, like, I, I consider myself to be, like, a luxury item. You know, mm -hmm. if you have, like, a, a, like a, I don't know, 99 Corolla or something like that, you might not do the most with that car. You, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you know, you don't have to have the best of everything to put on there because it's a low maintenance vehicle. Mm -hmm. But if you have some sort of brand new luxury car, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you have appropriate tires. Things have to be, you keep it up. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself to be a luxury item. Mm -hmm. Things that are luxurious require a lot more care. Mm -hmm. You know, I require the best lotions and oils to put on my skin, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because it's luxury items. Same thing with my hair, mm -hmm. the same thing with, with just who I am as a person. And when you respect yourself, you look at yourself like that, mm -hmm. as opposed to going out and, you know, willfully looking raggedy as, as a way to fight white supremacy, apparently. <laughs> that's, that's what people say, you know? <laughs> What but willfully looking raggedy though. Hold on, says what you mean? What you mean? Like like not doing the hair, yeah, wearing a bonnet, like advocating so hard to be outdoors in inside clothes. You know, what I'm I got you. And I it's like, and it lets me know that you haven't even washed yourself today. Like you don't respect yourself enough. If you got on pajamas, this is what you went to sleep in, right? You haven't done anything to yourself. Like if you if we respected ourselves, we would look better. We would speak better. And I'm not mm. saying that, like, we can't use, you know, the African-American vernacular English or our slang or whatever, because right. I, I talk like how I want to. Right. You know, you could tell from a lot of the things that I say that I'm from the West Coast. Right. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's not to do away with, like, our culture, but just, you know, speaking in a way to where people could understand what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. And we have the words to describe what we're trying to tell people. Yeah. You know, yeah. if we respected ourselves, we wouldn't go and... um you know, be like really out of shape because if you loved yourself and your body, and I know people get mad at that. Mm -hmm. People tell me like, you don't understand how hard it is because you're skinny. I don't think people understand how hard this is. Like this isn't easy to maintain. It takes discipline to not eat up all the food that I know I want to eat because I got a sweet tooth, you know? Yeah. I didn't do good this weekend because I was kind of like on vacation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I did eat like a whole pack of fudge stripe cookies, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, it requires a lot of discipline. Yeah. And, you know, if you respect yourself, 
you know, because we have this whole body positivity movement, which I understand. No one should look at themselves in the mirror and hate what they see. Right. But if you if you're doing self love and self care and you want to be, you know, body positive, you should love yourself enough to want to have your body working as best as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, you respect yourself enough to want the best out of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know you have potential in you. You should want to cultivate that instead of dying and putting all that potential in the grave, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It starts with us. Right. Right. If we want to see change, it starts with us respecting and loving ourselves. Yes, it does. And it's not about white people because everybody keeps saying that like, you know, are you doing this for, for them and all this other kind of stuff? Or it's not even like begging white people for things, you know, like saying like they have to fix this or they're the ones who put us in this. Like because we're we live in a whole victim society mm -hmm. where everyone is a is a full time victim. Mm -hmm. We're outraged by everything. Mm -hmm. Everything offends us. But victims aren't powerful. Like my mom would always tell me, you can't be pitiful and powerful at the same time. You just can't, you know, and if we're black excellence and. You know, we, we're so, it's so dope to be black and black is a vibe and all this other kind of stuff. If that's how we feel, then why are we in this victimhood? Mm. You know, like we don't get out of the place that we're in by feeling sorry for ourselves. Mm. You know, the people that put us in this position, they're not going to help us. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. put, they keep us in this position because it benefits them the most. Mm -hmm. It's like seeing a house on fire and asking the people that started the fire to help to put it out. Mm. Like they started this fire and we're looking to them to help put it out. We Ain't have help. to. We gotta do it ourselves. We have to do something. Yeah. And it starts with the black community, boy. <sighs> Eric, you need you need to start a show and come on my network. <laughs> Cause you know you you, you speak in my language. I I'm telling you this right now. I'm I'm like, why are we giving? And I hate saying white people, but I think why are we giving the people who put us in this position that much power? Exactly. By always saying, well, they, 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 they. Right. Rather than saying, okay, we acknowledge that this is an issue. Yes. It did happen. Yes. And it needs to be resolved. But why do we keep bringing it up? Rather than saying, all right, cool, this is where we are. Mm -hmm. so how do we progress forward? Exactly. Okay, Erica, you got a business. How can I sow into you? That then sows back into the community that I can benefit from. Right. Okay, CJ, you got this. Okay, bro, you got this. Okay, you got that. Like, how can we all come together and progress forward mm -hmm. rather than always complaining and always arguing about what they did? Right. For me right now, I'm like, well, who the heck is they? Mm -hmm. I'm done talking about they. Right. I want to talk about them in the future. What are we doing? Exactly. And what? how are we going to set them up to succeed? Mm -hmm. Like, it starts with us. Right. And that's the type of mindset that it should be. Because that's what the scriptures say, Proverbs 13, 22. You say you love the Lord too, E. He <laughs> said that's what the scriptures man. say. You know what I'm saying? A good man leaves up an inheritance for his children's children. Talk that talk, E. Talk <laughs> that she save, y'all. <laughs> Y'all, boy, let me try to tell you right now, boy. Y'all better slide them DMs, boy. Oh, yeah, you don't know. My my so my parents are uh, yeah, I'm a preacher's kid. You a preacher's kid? Yeah. From the West Coast? From the West Coast. I don't wanna say where you live, but in that city? Yeah. Well, they're in yeah. Yeah. Near that city? Yes. Okay, cool. I won't put a person business out there, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's what's up. I'm pro I probably I probably am aware of them, you know, because that means, you know, yeah, it won't leave right there. Okay, okay, okay. I feel good now, boy. We gotta go like another hour now, boy. She love the Lord. She know the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DM, she's single. Um, anyways. <clears throat> hey, we we <laughs> I think black love starts with really acknowledging where we gotta get better at. Right. You know, my, my platform is really all about how do we build wealth, how do we eliminate debt, and how do we start as a black community? How do we start creating and owning the tables that we create? Like, how do we take our lives back into our control mm -hmm. and we own that, right? Right. And one of the things that I'm always hearing from the black community is, well, white people, the system wasn't made for us. Right. Um, I'm always hearing, well, the white man will, won't won't let us win. Or right. this, this won't happen. We got to get reparations. We got to get this. We got to get that. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, man, if that's... If that's how we're going to think, we're never going to change. Right. And here's the truth. I don't think that we'll see major changes in my generation. 
Right. Uh, but I was reading a book um, called uh, The Wealthy Family, and they talk about how uh, all these white families, um, how they were able to send down generational wealth to 10 different generations mm. and how the wealth continued to stack up, not go up level and then die right you know it was like oh every generation just stacked up and it became and it was because that family was very strategic they had board meetings in their families mm -hmm. they had family meetings that was mandatory if you and your spouse if you married someone else you and your spouse had to come to that meeting right um if you had kids and uh, and if they were above 15 the kids had to be at the family meeting right and I was sitting there, I was like, man, when is the last time we've seen this in the black community? Right. You know, when have we sat here and said, okay, son, hey, get this. Um, and I felt convicted. I went on vacation about a month ago on a sabbatical. And I really felt convicted for myself because I have the estate plan. I have the money part that I'm leaving in generations. But I really didn't go deep and think about my, my ninth grandson, who would never meet me. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm literally now in a, I'm spending the rest of this year um, writing and thinking about my black ninth grandson. I'm writing Kim a letter. I'm writing that generation a letter from myself. I'm starting a journal that by the time it gets to them, I, they will see me, my son, daughter, whoever, that they will see the generation of leaders right. by the time it gets them to read, okay, hey, this is what we learn from. This is the mistake. This is what we learned from. This is what we did. Mm. This is what I would not do. And by the time it gets to them, they can learn about relationships, money, mistakes, uh, God, you name it, from my perspective, 10 generations before them. Yeah. And I think in a black community, if we really love the black community, it starts with us really thinking about the, the grandchildren we will never meet. Facts. That is such a huge, that is such a big deal to me, mm -hmm. you know, which is why I like that scripture is so important because it's like, we have to think bigger than ourselves. And that's what the problem is. Like you, you spoke about when you were younger and how you were selfish. And that's what it is a lot of the times. People that do have platforms, mm -hmm. they might've started out in a way that was like, okay, I want this to benefit our community, but then things shift and it becomes more about the ego and self and all of that. And people don't work together as much as they should, or, you know, it just, it becomes like a routine, you feel me? But I feel like what is really important is understanding that it's, it's not, it's bigger than just me and it's bigger than this time period, but it goes generations beyond, Absolutely. you know? And um, the crazy thing is like, the reason why I love my parents so much because they did they did a really good job with us. Yeah. But we had family meetings, like that was a thing. Come on now. We had to be there for the family meetings and we would discuss. And my dad is actually the first person, you know, who talked to me about finances and stuff. We went, I was like 16, 15 or 16 when he took me to the bank and showed me how to budget and open up accounts for me mm. and all that kind of stuff, you know, mm. so that I could understand. And, you know, that was back before we had apps and stuff. So I yeah. had to look at my... On the checkbook. Yes, and know what's in there. You're telling your age. Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling our age. <laughs> you know, I, apps you know and all that. Before, and I had to write down every transaction. Pretty much just said before cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before, before yeah, well, I'm a for real. We had on the checkbook. Yeah, you, you had, had the, the top of the thing. The ledger, the ledger. Like, yeah, what, what uh. you, to know what's in there. Yes. So you use that card, you don't bounce or you decline or whatever. You well, how many? I mean, you took us way back. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. But here's the downfall. My parents never taught me anything about that. And I think that's the problem in the black community. We have some like your parents who's so like, yo, we're going to start this now. Mm -hmm. My, I come from, I'm a preacher's kid too. I'm an Ashton ordained preacher, pastor. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, ordained, literally. Got the whole elder, what do they call it? Reverend, elder. Some people call it reverend. Some people call it elder. Uh, then before that was the ministers. And then uh, you got ministers, elder, reverend, and then pastor. So I am an ordained pastor. Went through seminary, went through four years of seminary with... Um, 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 Simon Temple. Um, I forgot the name of the program we had to go through. Uh, but that's crazy. I'm an ordained minister. What? 
Yeah. Come on, e, come on, e, that, See, that's why she's articulate. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? <laughs> I knew it was something right there, boy. So now when y'all slide in the DMs, now y'all gotta y'all gotta come correct now. You know what I'm saying? She ordained minister too. So uh, mm. see, I'm giving y'all some help. When you spit the game, you gotta spit the right game now, because the other game ain't gonna work on ordained minister. Anyways, <laughs> um, you know, and the only thing I was really taught was tithe. You know, give. Right. Like if I got when I got my allowance, it was ten bucks. You gotta give a dollar to God on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And my parents made sure. Right. I had that dollar in my pocket, and when I got in the car, I didn't have that dollar in my pocket. Right. But I really never really got the information on wealth, uh, wealth building, business building, um, and watch this. I never really got the information within the black community on how to run a healthy black business. Mm hmm. And I love the black community. Right. But I would definitely say sometimes, Erica, it's hard to support the black community on the business side. And I think it's because they don't really, we don't really love ourselves like you're talking about. Because if we really had boundaries and 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 looked at us as in luxury. Yes. Right? Right. We everything that comes from us would also be luxury. Exactly. It would it would be at least to the best of our experience. Prime example. Um um, after va uh, after vacation, we um, all the channels, uh, not channels, but all the personalities, I don't say personalities, all the shows that are assigned to my network, all of them are black, right? And so they all came in town so we could shoot some content, have a meeting, and just really talk about the things that we're doing as a, as a team of black people. I don't own their content. They don't work for me. We're just all teaming up together to help each other grow on our platforms, mm -hmm. right? And so I told uh, my show producer, Michelle, I said, hey, I want to send them all a PDF. I want it designed. I want them to get, okay, here's the itinerary. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. And really just so they'll know the experience of what they're about to experience. And Michelle responded. She said, well, I've already sent them an email and gave them all the information. I said, that's cool. Great. Thank you so much. But let's mm -hmm. take it a step further. Right. Like, let, let, let's just let's step up our game and show the level of excellence of how we want to operate as a black network. And, man, she did it. She did a great job. She killed it. I asked, you, asked her to, to send it to our creative director, Alex, and she did it herself. But I got so many text messages, Michelle, about that. So thank you for doing that, Michelle. Um, but I got so many text messages from the people saying, yo, when we got that email, we were all like, wait. Right. This brother ain't playing. Exactly. He's serious. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's the experience that I want to I, I wanna give. Right. Um, I'll say this too in the black thing. It's too early on the show. Um, it's early on the show, but you're going to get, you know, when you leave, by the, when you get home, you're going to get a little bit of time. You know, nice little cologne thing saying, thank you for coming to the table and having a conversation with us. Luxurious, I mean, really stepping up in the black community. And I want people when they experience this business, I want them to experience excellence and, and quality. Mm -hmm. But we can't say that we do that as a community. Yeah. And I think if we all really loved ourselves and valued and really aimed for excellence in the black community, right. we will be wealthier. Yeah. We would have healthier relationships. Uh, we could really impact the world, but I don't think we move at that level of excellence. And I think it's because we have low standards personally. Right. <clears throat> I asked you a question earlier. I'm going to ask you this question on the show. I want y'all to answer this question too. Because this is the queen of black love. <laughs> and when I see people say things like, ah, oh, man, she's trying to please white man. I'm like, y'all really don't understand. She's really about black people. Yeah. Which is why I had to get you on the show. And she's not racist. She loves white people, but she's just like, yo, I, I'm here for the elevation of us. Right. Um, I asked you earlier. I want to get y'all started on this one. I walked into a minority-owned particular bank. I won't say the name of the bank because I want to support, right? Mm -hmm. But when I walked in, I wanted to bring my emergency funds, which is a very hefty amount, to that bank to support that bank. Mm -hmm. When I walked into the bank, one, it had a small odor. I was like, oh, okay, there's nothing. It was in the hood. So the hood always has a little thing to it. I said, okay, it's cool. Great, great, great. I walk in. It's not really like the most attractive thing we walk in. I was like, okay, it's black. But then I'm standing in line. And as I'm waiting to get to the counter, the lady behind the counter, she's eating chicken. Yeah. And then when she asks she's eating chicken, hold on a minute, sir. I'll be right there. Eating chicken behind the counter. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> this is, and I'm standing there waiting, you know, 
And I'm like, wow, I'm just, I'm just trying to make a, you know, open an account, deposit a check. Mm -hmm. She literally makes me sit there for about five minutes. And when I get to the counter, then she tells me, oh, you trying to open an account? I was like, yes, sir. She was like, oh, bruh, all you got to do is go over there and sign on in and, and one of the people get you. I was like, well, there was no sign. It just, it just said, come here. Right. And I'm like, so I sat there for five minutes, wait for you to eat chicken and tell me that. Boom. I told someone before, and I was like, hey, the problem that I have with supporting black, black owned businesses is that it's just the poor customer service and, and the poor and the lack of excellence when it comes to our community. Right. I said, so why would I choose to go to a, another bank that may be a white owned bank compared to a black owned bank or where, why would I go to a white owned establishment rather than a black owned establishment? It's not because I don't want to support them. It's just the experience and the lack of excellence that I'm going to get there may bother me. I will always try it. But when I tried the first time and experience was horrible, I'm not going to want to go back. Right. And someone told me that you're not for the black community then because it shouldn't matter what you experience, it's about you supporting. Well. Uh-oh. The, the black yeah. queen about to talk. I, you know, it does matter. You feel me? Like, because the thing is this, we work for the things that we have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we spend our money, we want to feel good about spending it. Yeah. You know, we yeah. want to feel like, okay, I've spent this money and I'm getting whatever service or goods or whatever it is, but I feel good about this exchange. And as a, cause as a consumer, that should be your experience. Mm -hmm. So it definitely does matter. Um, I wouldn't say that you're not for the black community because businesses, they do need to understand like a level of customer service and how to deal with people, you know? Um, me personally, I've given businesses chances. Mm -hmm. Like I'll, I'll let it be known whatever thing I saw that I didn't like, but not in a way of like, you know, this is raggedy in here, nothing like that, but just go to them and be like, okay, you know, I love coming to your business and I want to keep coming, but it was this thing that happened that I didn't necessarily rock with. I'm just letting you know yeah. because it could turn other customers away, you know, mm -hmm. and hopefully when I go again, some changes will be implemented. Like I've done that before and I've seen changes, changes implemented, changes implemented, you right. know, because a lot of times, you know, we're such a ego filled people sometimes, you know, and if you get at people a certain way, yeah. they don't want to hear it if you're right or wrong, you right. know, but we have to put the ego aside, you know, like I know for me personally, you know, because I send out like merch and earrings and things of that nature, you know, we're very used to like Amazon and stuff like that, like people getting their stuff quick, yeah. you know, it might not come like two days from now. And so people email me and they have inquiries and they want to know. And it's like me putting myself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. If I was them and I ordered something online and I'm not sure whether or not it's going to come, like I hope it's going to come, mm -hmm. but I don't know this woman. I don't know if she's going to send the merch out or if I'm never going to get it and she's just going to run off with my money. Facts. So putting myself in their shoes when they hit me up and they're upset, like, it's been a week and I haven't got my order yet or what's going on. I hope you're not scamming people. I don't then come back and be like, well, you know, first of all, you got a line for saying that, you know, because I feel some type of way. I'm not a scammer. Right, right, But right. what I come back and I say is, you know, my sincere apologies for the delay and the inconvenience. Yeah. You know, we've had an influx of orders, but I assure you yours is coming. I'll be sending out your tracking number. And they always hit me back with, Oh, no problems, queen. I'm just excited to like their whole attitude changes. Yeah. You know, and from working, I've worked at a lot of different places. You know, I've worked for banks. And what I've realized is that the customer service thing doesn't even have to be that difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a bad experience with a business and that business fixes it, you'll be a more loyal customer than someone who never had a bad experience at all. Facts. You know, so Facts. every... Every irate customer that emails me or they're upset or they want to know the status, that's somebody that I know I could turn into a lifelong customer, yeah. depending on what I do. Yes. You know, so I feel like with black owned businesses, you know, we just have to better understand that the customer service aspect doesn't have to be a, a place where we fall short. Mm -hmm. It could be a place where we shine, yep. where yep. we retain customers, which is the biggest thing. Customer retention is is everything. Huge. You know? Huge. So, um, so yeah, so I feel like as far as your, because I, I, I kind of went on a tangent there. My bad about that. No, um, I like that. Off, off topic from what you were saying, but I don't think that if you don't support a business because you've had a bad customer experience, that doesn't make you like not for the black community. You're still a consumer at that. Yeah. And that business has to step up to the plate because this is a competitive industry. And if they want to survive, they have to 
tweak some things in order to survive in this climate. And that's just the truth of the matter. That's facts. Know? That's facts. I think I think you said something that's very key. Um, we launched something um, here, and I think on the front end, I think one thing we are very good at in the black community, we're good at selling. Like we're good at the setting it up, make it look big, sell it. Right. What we're not good at is on the back end, customer retention and customer service. Right. That's my flaw. Mm -hmm. I was very good at selling. And then we ran into some issues to, that we didn't see coming on the back end. Right. And I can't respond to every email. I'm getting upset with my team because I'm expecting them to do their full-time jobs and respond to 200, 300 emails right. and resolve every problem. And then it hit me. They can't do that. And so I literally had to step back out as a leader of my company. I was like, yo, bro, you need to really find you a customer service team that their job is to solely deal with the customer service side of things mm -hmm. and the customer retention. So we retained a lady and a company that helped us with customer retention and sales. Right. And it was so funny is when you, every time I tried to um, uh, cancel my cell phone, what happened? Well, sir, on a customer service line, they send you to what? A customer retention person. Right. Well, what can we do better? Right. Oh, how about we give you 10% off? Mm -hmm. Like they have a whole strategy exactly. of retaining the people. Exactly. Because they understand retention is honestly more important than actually bringing in brand new people. Exactly. If you have a monthly, long term type of situation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Right. And you know what's funny? I'm going to be honest with you. I couldn't find one black person in the customer retention. Mm. It was a white person. Yeah. And I love her. Love you, Shana. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because she has literally helped us and taught us how to retain people. Right. And how to honestly, when people leave, how to assist them leaving with a good name. Exactly. To where if, if someone asks them, well, why did you leave? It's not a negative experience. Mm -hmm. They can be like, hey, I honestly didn't like the product. But I mean, hey, man, it was a great experience. Right, right. I think it we, we got to do better with that. Yeah. We don't really understand how important that is. Mm. But because I worked like for different places, like I worked in the customer service department. First, I was I worked for Bank of America in their call center in the home retention department. OK. And then I switched over into the customer service side. And that's all I did. Wow. And so I got to see firsthand like how things could turn around. And then I was able to implement that in my business. Like I've seen customers that were emailing me back and forth and they were upset. And then I resolved it. <laughs> And as soon as I put out a new design or whatever, they were I saw that name again. They were the first ones to buy. Mm. I was like, so I, I know that it works. Yeah, I've seen it work several times in other businesses and my own. And it doesn't have to be a scary thing that we shy away from. Yeah. If we just humble ourselves, if people email us mad and stuff, don't get mad. Mm -hmm. Don't take that personal. Apologize. And make it right with this person. Even if it costs you now, like even if you have to ship out something extra, you're going to get that money back if they continue to be, you know, a loyal customer. So it's worth it to me to send out something extra or to do something extra for them so that I can retain the business and retain like, you know, just establish a really good relationship because that's what it's about, mm -hmm. you know, in our personal lives and business and all of that is having good relationships with good people. No, it really is. And I, it just hit me too because I know some people saying, well, um, I've talked to some people in the black community and I, and I told them about this, like the re retention part and how much I pay. Their first response was, that's expensive. I was like, well, brother, how much money are you going to lose if you don't have customer right. retention? Right. So I'd rather pay this up front to retain mm -hmm. than to pay out way more because I lost them. Exactly. And I think sometimes within our community, everything is about cost. We want to be selfish and keep a lot. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is actually the more that I can give away within reason, it actually helps my business. Right. The more I can hire, it helps my business. The more that I keep, I think it hurts because that means I don't have the I don't have the right people in the chairs mm -hmm. to impact the company in a great and healthy way. Right. You know? And so man, I, I'm see 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 y'all, we got the black queen in the building today. <laughs> We talking about black love. I want to end the show with this. Black love is a revolution. Mm -hmm. Where where does this come from? You said it's coming from uh, one of your songs. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to end on black love. Like why why do you believe black love is the revolution? Because um, that's what it's going to take for us to first of all create more black people. You know, um, 
And once we realize that we're not enemies, you know, contrary to what the society may push on us, once we realize that, you know, everything will turn around in our communities, in my opinion, you know, I believe that like having the family structure there, because we won't have as many like men in prison with fathers present teaching them and showing them different trades and things that they could work. We won't have a lot of women who, you know, are having to deal with multiple different men and having like a lot of children that they have to take care of themselves because they'll have like a mother and a father there that helps them and guides them. Cause there were certain things that I didn't do because of what my father told me or what my mother told me and seeing their example and wanted to emulate something like that. Mm -hmm. So black love is the revolution. It really is like nothing is going to take us further than us realizing that we honestly need each other mm -hmm. and that there's nothing wrong with admitting that because I know sometimes we have a problem with saying that to each other. I had a question. As a black woman, you said we need each other. You have generations of black ladies saying, I don't need a man for nothing. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. Yo, CJ, you got to go back and put her face on there as soon as she said it. I need you to edit that and put <laughs> her face. She didn't think about it. She didn't question it. I like that E. I'm serious. We have a generation of black ladies saying, I don't need a man for nothing. I may want him, but I don't need him. That's a lie. Well, how is that a lie, my That's sister? Totally Talk to us. Because we are struggling. We are not doing well with this. I mean, the, the weight of what we have to carry as black women is too heavy to carry by ourselves. And we are not doing a good job at carrying it. Mm. The majority of us are overweight or obese, you feel me, because of stress and all this that we have to do. We don't have the adequate time to do things that we need to. If we had someone there with us, we would be able to have utilize more time and then they'd be able to hold us accountable. It would just be better. The majority of us are overweight. The, the more educated we are as women and the and the the higher paying jobs and careers that we have, the more likely we are to be alcoholics. It's not working us trying to do it by ourselves. We're more depressed than we've ever been, people in general, but especially women. And women who are successful, and that seems like an oxymoron, right? You have all the money, you can buy what you want. You don't want for anything. Then what is wrong, what's missing? You know, people think just because physical needs are met that we're good. Well, I don't need this because I'm straight physically, I have food, I have a housing, I have a car. But how are you doing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Like that side of you is deteriorating and dying because we are communal people and we need each other. You know, so all that, I don't need a man. It's a lie. It's the, a lie. And I'm asking a real question from a woman's perspective. And I'm gonna give you my, my thoughts. Do you think a part of y'all not winning, or not, you're winning, but I think a part of you all feeling the way that you're feeling and, and it's not working is because of the lack of presence of men, good men? I do think so. You know, and I said it before that I feel like black men and black women are suffering from a shared traumatic experience that neither of us are responsible for. Mm. So instead of us trying to blame each other and be like, well, the men don't do this or the women don't do this, because that's what's that's, that's what's that's what's going on right now. Especially that's all you hear in Clubhouse. Exactly. It's, it's ridiculous. But instead of us doing that, just having more of an understanding that, yes. Things happens, you know, de what is it, deindustrialization that took a lot of jobs away. Yep. And um, I know how that, well, I'm not a man, you feel me, so I don't know, know exactly how that feels. Mm -hmm. But I see how men change when they're not able to provide for their families. Absolutely. They're not the same man. We're not. A totally different person. Right. Mean a lot of the times and just things just, it's just not good, mm -hmm. you know. And I feel like men have to have to do that in order to feel like they're men. Mm -hmm. And when you take that aspect away, that automatically messes up the dynamics. And mm -hmm. then the women have to work harder and it takes us out of the essence that we're supposed to be in. So, you know, all of it, I feel like it, it does, it, play, it plays a major role. And there are things that both parties have done, mm -hmm. you know, our response to what has happened to us that wasn't the most beneficial, mm -hmm. but we can't do anything about the past. Mm -hmm. We have to just understand what that is and move forward, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, any woman that says she doesn't need a man, black, white, Hispanic, or whomever, um, I think that woman needs to be single. I think, I mean, well, yeah, I feel you on that regard, but I feel like she's never experienced the true benefit. Like me, I could, I know what that's like to 
have somebody around you that is going to protect you and provide for you no matter what mm -hmm. because they love you and they care about you mm -hmm. like i know what that is to feel protected my whole life some women have gone their whole lives without ever experiencing that mm -hmm. so in their minds they don't need it because mm -hmm. you know how could you know that you need something that you've never had mm -hmm. you know so i feel like it's just i wouldn't even say like oh something is wrong with those women it's just that their experiences have led them to that point the same as men who have like gotten the short end of the stick with women and yeah. feel a certain type of way yeah their experiences have led them to that point so it's understanding that there is better and greater that exists and we don't have to be bound by raggedy experiences of the past yeah you know yeah and I agree. I agree. I think <clears throat> I think men have to take accountability of the role that we played in how our sisters are feeling today. Yeah. I say this on my show often. I I, I was that guy that used um, and did ladies wrong. And and there are probably one or two, honestly, in my past that is saying I don't need a black man. And I think what she's saying is I don't need the crap that I went through with Anthony 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what she doesn't need. Right. In my personal opinion, like we don't need that hurt. We don't need the pain of the past. Mm -hmm. But then while I was in therapy, as I was walking through therapy with BetterHelp, little plug, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I've I've really learned that even the man who you're going to fall in love with is going to hurt you. Yeah. Not intentionally, maybe not not because he's um, intentionally trying to date you and another person and that person. No, no, no. But he is going to hurt your feelings because he has your heart, mm -hmm. right? And, and I've learned that, um, and because I, I felt bad for how I did that as a black man, and even in therapy, I had to really one admit it, to apologize spiritually. Mm -hmm. Uh, three tried to apologize in person. One of them uh, allowed me to apologize, and she accepted it. Mm -hmm. The other one cussed me straight on out. Right. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and now it's like, even though I'm still flawed, I think all of us are still flawed in some form or fashion. Um, I, I'm just moving differently because I think the only way the black community is going to change, I think it does start with the black man. It does. I mean, it takes accountability from everybody, yeah. you know, like we have to look at ourselves and want to better ourselves, you know, like self-improvement, you know, and, and making sure that we are the best that we can be mm -hmm. to help our community as a whole, you know, and black men definitely do play a role in it, you know, because it's not just women that are just out here wilding out or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's both parties that are involved that are making things a little harder and more difficult for us, no. you know, and um yeah, I just feel like the the blaming thing is the biggest issue because if you're shifting blame, then nobody's taking accountability. Zero. Nobody's doing anything to improve in any kind of way. Zero. I, I totally. No, I totally agree. Um, I, I really do. I think we got to get better in the community of just being quiet and listening to learn, not mm -hmm. listening to respond. Right. You know. Right. You know, how do we sit back and just learn from what they're saying? We're not saying that everything that like the woman may say about men are 100% right. Mm -hmm. But I think if I could sit back and just listen, okay, talk to me about it, man. What am I doing wrong? How am I making you feel? Right. And then I go back and I get with someone wiser, like a therapist or my pastor or an older man. I'm like, hey, this is everything that she said. Mm -hmm. I think we can then go from there and say, you know what? Out of the 10 things she said, six of them were spot on. Four of them, okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Respect it, but don't apply it. Don't listen to it. And I think if we could be better at just listening on both sides, um, put our egos aside, put our emotions aside, and just listen to learn, right. man, I really do believe our community will be better in all aspects. And I think the reason why 20, they say by 2053, 2054, uh, the black community will have zero to negative wealth is, is because one, you know, we, we really haven't understood the love or the meaning of black love. And I think if we can get that within ourselves and listen to learn, help each other, mm -hmm. stop, you know, cheating and, and doing all that type of stuff, I think we'll be better. It's one thing I learned from my fathers, man. I, I watched them not be happy. You know, I've watched them get into the arguments with, with their spouses. And I never saw them go out and cheat. And right. someone said, Anthony, why are you still not married? 
I said, one, I take ownership. It's because of internal things in myself that I had to work on. And then two, I refuse to settle because I also refuse to cheat. Yeah. Um, once I get married, I don't care what is in front of me, what is around me. Um, I'm not a cheating man. I, I want to be married to one woman and one woman only. And so that means she got to have the four Bs. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? She got to be black. She got to have the Bible. She got to have the brains. And boy, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying she got to have fat booty. I know me. I know me. But she got to have a little something, something. I like to squeeze a little something, something. You know what I'm saying? A little something, something. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I think in a black community, especially in the Christian black community, we are ashamed to say that we want to have great intimacy with our spouses. Yeah. And my family did say, don't marry someone just because. No. What did my mama say? I'm about to upset your mom. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. He said, son, it's not about the looks and it's not about sex. It's all about God. Mm -hmm. Does she love the Lord? I'm like, listen, I don't know about y'all, but God don't turn me on like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the sex, definitely, it matters. You feel me? It shouldn't, it shouldn't be something that it matters. Yeah. She, it you know matters. what I'm saying? E's e being, you know, she's a woman, so I don't want to make her uncomfortable. You know, I talk about this on another day, but boy, let, let me tell you right here. Let me tell you something. Boy, I'm trying to tell you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just uh, I got my legs up in the air. Y'all yeah, all came and see it. But I'm like, Lord Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We just got to we just got to be right. And that's my thing, though. If I'm happy in all those areas, when hell does come, I'm good. Yeah. Because I can say, yo, boy, don't mess this up. You got what you you got what you want and what you need. It's a it's a season that y'all ain't really with each other right now. Don't mess up home because if you mess up home, you're gonna miss out on those four things, and then two, you're gonna mess up the family dynamic. Right. And then three, you're messing up your legacy. Yeah. And I just don't want to do that with the black. Exactly. Family. I just can't do that because that trust is hard to gain back. You it feel really me? It's, is. it's it's it takes a while to build, but yeah. it it takes almost nothing to destroy it. Easy. And then trying to build it back is damn near impossible. You know. So it's like don't. Don't do that. Yeah. Is, is it worth it? You feel nah, me? Like, think not. of the repercussions. It's not. That's what I'm still saying, because I'm going to find him. <laughs> y'all, listen, man. We are going to drop all of Erica's information in today's show notes. She, I mean, I know half y'all done probably saw her. She's going viral all over the place. Um, and I want y'all to go, su go support her. Uh, go check her out. on. Um, we're going to drop her Instagram, YouTube channels, and all type of stuff. Support her products. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little upset uh, because she didn't you know, bring me an extra shirt. Black love is a revolution. I'm going to get you one for sure. No, I'm going to buy one because you're black. Uh, so I'm going to buy one. And... Um, um, I want y'all to go buy one. Can we buy one on the website? you have anything like yes, that? Yes, indeed. We're going to drop it in today's show notes. We want y'all to go buy it, support it. And if it takes a little while, a little bit longer than a week, y'all, we just sent her thousands of people to go buy her shirt. So give her some time, um, you know, but hey, if you don't get it within, you know, a couple of weeks, shoot, shoot them an email and you'll get a response. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But we want to support our sister. We want to support everything that she's doing. And uh, thank you so much. After a year. Y'all, I'm going to give it. I'm, yo, I saw her. On Instagram, and at the top, it said Washington, D.C. I was like, yo, sis, you're in town? Yo, swing through real quick. Literally right. within a matter of two hours, he was like, it's a done deal. Like, right. yo, bro, I'm rocking with you. Where I need to be, what time, we'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, because we've been trying to do this for a whole year, and both of us have just been missing. I've even dropped the ball quite a few times. And then I literally just got off of my sabbatical off of social media. Really? I just got back on Friday. Yeah. And then, boom, I saw you on Sunday at, what, like 7 o'clock, and we're recording this show. To look at the Lord. Right. God is good. You the timing. That? Yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah. And I appreciate being here. This yeah. has been dope. It's been a dope conversation. No, nah, man. You, 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 you the queen. You, you for real, for real. Yo, check her out. Support information. All of her stuff is in the show notes. Get it. And y'all, I'm going to say this, y'all. Um, even if you white, black love is still a revolution. When black people um, are healthy or in a good place, it even impacts the economy. Yeah. It impacts white people. Mm -hmm. it, it impacts the world. So listen, Man, get that shirt and rock it. And if they be like, why are you rocking a black, black love is the revolution? Because I want my black brothers and sisters to win just as much as I want all of us to win. And I want to help them win, for mm -hmm. sure. And I appreciate all my white brothers and sisters who be rocking with me. I love you. God bless you. <laughs> You're helping that CPM good. You're helping the reviews good. Yes. Yeah. We'll see y'all next show. Peace out. <laughs>